Hello everyone. Welcome to the next session of SAP GRC Access Control. In this session, we will be looking at the detailed configuration of MSMB. The first stage is process global setting. In this stage, we will select the process ID of the MSMB configuration which we are trying to maintain. It's a selection stage. There are many process IDs or there are many defined process which is delivered by SAP using the BC sets. In general, we can use all these process IDs. Uh, most of the scenarios which you may use is already already delivered by SAP. Let me give an overview of the SAP delivered process IDs. The first one is SAP GRAC access request. This will be the process ID we will be uh, using it to this entire session to show you how does the MSMB configuration works. This process ID is used for access request approval. That means whenever we create an access request, this is the one which triggers all the approval process and uh, notification and related workflows. The next one is an access request for HR, for HR, uh, HR OM object. OM object means that if you if you know then HR we need to assign the OCK management object to the respective users uh, using uh, the structural authorization. Uh, that means uh, if you know the transaction code OOSB that we will assign the structural authorization object OM object which was created by the structural authorization in this OOSB. So we can also use our access request management to request the OM object assigned to the users. This workflow as well as the approval process behind this, this particular task will be defined this process ID. Next one is GRAC control assignment. This is for mitigation control assignment. Whenever you need you assign found any mitigation whenever you found any risk and you wanted to have a mitigation control assigned this will be the workflow which will trigger all the respective processes or workflow during this particular process this is to maintain the mitigation controls during maintenance of mitigation controls what are all the workflow you would like to trigger that will be maintained here next one is firefighter log report this process ID is used for firefighter log review, meaning after you use the firefighter, you want you have a separate process that we need to review this log and certify these logs. So we need to trigger some notification and uh, some related process during this uh, during this firefighter review. All this workflow related process will be defined in this process ID GRAC firefighter underscore log underscore report. Next one is function approver. This process ID is used that if you would like to enable the approver process during function maintenance or if you wanted to change any function then you want to trigger an approver, you can trigger it from using this process ID. This again depends on depends on your organizational scenario whether you will do this function change and risk uh, risk changes in your productive system. So you would like to have an additional approver on this this specific function change or risk changes. This is GRAC role approver. This will be used in business role management. Whenever you are changing any roles, then you will have a role owner who will be approving these changes. So all this related process as well as workflow will be defined in this process IDs. This SOD risk review workflow. This uh, this is all. This is to review the SOD conflict during your reviewer process. This is to define all the workflows related to SOD review during your SOD review process. All this workflow will be configured under this process ID. Then GRAC access review request. When you trigger the access review, you can have all the workflows and the notification related to the access review can be defined in this 
process ID. So if you see all the maximum scenarios which we may use in a typical implementation scenario is already delivered by SAP. You can do some modification in this scenario itself or if you'd like to create a new process ID by your own, it is also still possible. Let me show you this in, this, in the system, how whatever we have seen in this particular slide. Go to SPRO, navigate to Governance, Risk and Compliance, select Access Control, select Workflow for Access Control. Here you will select Maintain MSMP Workflow. When you click on Maintain Workflow, this will open an open Internet Explorer. This will bring you to MSMP configuration screen. This is the first screen what we have seen. If you see, we have all the SAP delivered process IDs available in the screen. If you can select the first one process ID and say next, means that from the next and to the last stages, the process ID which you have selected in the initial process ID are being configured. Let me repeat it again. So when you select GRC AC access request and say next, that means in the maintain rules, this all these rules are related to access request approval workflow. Same like this for all the all the other stages. These are all the process IDs which is delivered by SAP. Uh, if, if you would like to change the, any of these process IDs and this configuration, then click the change button. Then this is enabled for changes. Let's see all other, other configuration which is available in the same process global setting. How to access this MSMP which we have already seen? Go to SPRO, navigate to Governance, Risk and Compliance, and navigate to Access Control, open Workflow Access Control, then maintain MSMP Workflow, which opens up Internet Explorer where you can configure MSMP Workflow. If you have seen in the screen, there is some more settings which was available below the process IDs. So first one is enable escalation on fixed date. If you click this this particular button, then you can key in one date. That means if you like to escalate all the pending requests related to that specific process ID, what you have selected, then you can use this option. This option will be become handy when you are trying to do some major changes. You wanted to clear all the existing requests to be completed in a specific date. Then this option will become handy. Otherwise, we may not use this one because this will escalate all the pending or the in progress request in a specific date, which was mentioned it here. To display our changes, we have seen there is a mode button that we can change, display or change. The next one is escalation column checkbox that, that I already mentioned that if you enable this checkbox, then you can put the dates here. Then we will come to the notification setting. We have two different notification settings. The request submission notification, end of request notification. If you see this template, template ID. This is end of request template ID and this is submission template ID. We will come to this this one. How do we determine this template IDs in our later session? This is a section where we can define the templates, notification templates. So EOR templates mean end of request templates. So once this request, the particular process ID is completed, that end of request, then we can notify the user using this template. And this will be the end of request recipient, the user who is going to receive this particular notification. This is the global setting. We can define these settings globally 
that it will be applicable irrespective of other configuration what we will be doing in the later stage. Then submission template, while submitting the request, then we can trigger a template, we can trigger a notification to the specific recipient. These templates are standard templates. You can modify this template using the SAP standard transaction code SA16 and put the template ID and you can modify these templates. Next one is recipient ID on end of request as well as submission which we have seen. Then we have another screen called escape condition. This escape condition are specified for the specific conditions for example approver not found. Let's say you have a request where this approver is not found, there is no approver defined, then what happens to that particular request? Then we can define an escape route on this specific condition that this will be routed to a specific path to a specific stage. We will come to the path and uh, stage configuration in, in our stage 5 in, in detail. How does this path and stage, stage is configured? So if this is a global global setting for, a, for this request that you can enable if the approver is not found then we can direct to a path uh, or this provisioning is failed. If for some reason this provisioning is failed in the backend system we can route this specific request to the different stage or a different path. We can also specify the stage of this specific path. That means let's say we are in one, one stage where this these two has occurred then we can send this specific request to an upper stage it can be re-executed again so this time it is very flexible to configure all these stages and the path let's see in our system so if you see this is the enable escalation when you click this button you will you can specify your date So all the pending request will be escalated in this specific date. This is end of request template ID. This template ID is coming from the stage, variables and templates. If you see GRAC close is a template. So we maintain this template here. So this is coming from this specific process ID which we have selected. This process ID contains a template which is called GRAC close. We can change this, this is a standard template delivered by SAP using BC sets. You can change this template using SC61 and you can also create an additional template if it is required. And then next is the recipient ID, end of request recipient ID. Recipient ID is coming from the agent. This is an agent. We have GRC user. This is the recipient for notification. So we use this recipient ID for notification. We can maintain it here as a global configuration. So we know what is template, what is the recipient. We will come to these stages again that then you will understand this very clearly. Yes. Same like this end of request, we have submission templates. During the submission, we can have a template which will be triggered to notify this particular recipient. Then we have escape condition. The escape condition, we can enable the escape condition. If you enable the escape condition, then we can define a path. This path is coming from the path which is in stage 5. We will come to this in detail. This is the path and this is the stage. This we can define it here. That means if this condition is met that approver not found then this will be escalated to that path which we mention it which we will will be configuring it here and to the specific stage of that path. And auto provisioning failed. If in case there is any problem that provisioning, auto provisioning failed, then we can notify the specific people or we can reroute this request to a different path so that it can be reprocessed or some, some additional trigger can be done. Let's go to the next stage, 
stage two that maintaining rules in this stage that you specify all rules which are during the execution of the workflow that you selected in stage one for configuration that means we selected the access request process ID in the stage one all the rules which is related to this process ID should be maintained in this stage means we selected this process ID GRC access request I'll make it display so in the stage 2 we need to have all the process IDs which is related to these rules it it needs to be maintained it here until unless we maintain all the rule ID here that we cannot use this rule ID in the coming configuration settings so all the rule IDs related to this specific process ID should be configured here next one is rule kind we have we also seen in the previous session there is four type of rule kind initiator rule agent rule routine rule notification and variable rule initiator rule this rule determines the path of submitting request let's say you are creating a request for a new user then it determines the path that what is the path it should follow we have seen in stage 5 there is something called path so we can have multiple path but remember the initiator rule should be only one for a process ID but you can have multiple path for this process so let me repeat again there will be only one initiator rule in any process ID that's one which is going to trigger the request and you can have multiple path for this specific process IDs so this initiator rule will define a path based on what is defined in the request let's say for an example you have you wanted to have different path for different type of request say create user you wanted to have one path different kind of approvers for change role you wanted to have different kind of approvers or a different kind of path or if you wanted to delete a user you wanted to follow a different path this path can be defined by initiator rule based on your selection so you can have multiple path derived from this initiator rule next one is agent rule agent rule will determ determine the recipients of the stage that means in a particular particular stage that you have some agents Le agents can be an approver for example you you are in a particular stage that you need to find who is the approver that will be defined by agent rule next one is routine rule in the routine rule you can define details that means routing based on based on your inputs let's say you have something like uh, SOD found in the SOD conflict was found in the request so you wanted to uh, re reroute this uh, particular request to to a different path then we can define it here the fourth one is notification variable rule this specific rule determines the variables used in the notification of emails so any variables that you wanted to define in your template that needs to be configured using notification variable rule then this this can be dynamically changed for each uh, request for example this request number request number can change from rule to one request to another request so this will be a variable which will be coming from this variable rule initiator and routine rule should have result for individual rules so initiator rules and routine rules 
should have result for individual rules that means the result for initiator as well as routine should be specified in this stage the result of initiator and routine rule is simply the path yeah so initiator and the routine rule will define the path so the result coming from initiator and routine the path needs to be defined here as i said initially that all the rules we will be using in the coming stages need to be maintained it here so until unless we maintain all the rules which we will be using in the coming stages in this specific stage that we will not be able to use it in the coming stage that means we have to define it here there is a standard rules which is again delivered by sap bccs if you wanted to have additional rules we can maintain it in this stage let's see what we have seen in this this particular presentation here okay these are all the rule ids and these are all the rule kind so we have agent rule if you see grac msmp manager agent this is an agent so we have an agent rule which determines this manager and this is the initiator we have only one initiator and we have the notification variable we also have routing rules for example sod violation it's a routing rule we also seen in the presentation the initiator and the routing rule should have result so if you select the initiator rule then you will find a result button here so whenever you s result so you click the result then you have an additional selection screen where you can define the result so this specific initiator rule have a result called grac underscore default underscore result and this should be available for initiator as well as the routing you can have multiple result if you want additional result to be added you go to the change mode back here here this will allow you to add additional rule id here then you can define the rule id and description and rule type we will come to rule type again later and we can define the rule kind then based on the rule kind you can define the result and delete this one rule then we can add here we can add additional rule values this is the value of the rule and this is a free text the next one is the rule type as we seen in our system that we need to select the rule type we have different rule types the rule types used to determine the way how we derive the result okay there is four different kind of rule type first one is brf rules i says business rule framework plus rules the first one is brf plus rules this uh, rule de defines the brf of application to fetch the result from based on the condition which is available in the specific request or specific rule the brf plus flat rule this also same like uh, brf plus rules but the difference between brf rules as well as brf brf plus flat rule is that brf plus flat rule the determines the result on line by line the brf plus rule determine the execute the result as a whole as a one condition together yeah as a one condition brf plus will do it by line by line we will see it in detail how does this brf plus and brf plus flat rule will work 
in the BRF plus session. Next one is function module based rules. This function module based rule is is an coded output. That means it's an it's a normal SAP function module based on the, based on the input coming from this specific uh, rule ID that it will give the uh, output. The next one is ABAP class based rule. It's an ABAP method class method. It's an coded output. It will it will give you the defined output based on what based on the ABAP code. So how to add a new rule? The rule ID we need to specify rule ID, rule description, and the rule type. Then we will have define the rule type whether it is BR of plus rule or function module based rule or ABAP class based rule or BR of plus flat rule rule kind and it's initiator rule, routine rule, agent rule and notification variable rule. Let's see. Change. Next. We add. Here we will add this. Yeah. This is we are going to specify the rule ID. Then you put a description and rule type whether we need to specify a BR of plus rule or function based rule or ABAP based rule or ab BR of plus flat rule and we will specify the rule kind. The initiator rule should be only one, protein rule can be more, agent rule is to determine the agents, notification variable is to determine the notification variables. Next one is global rules. In this in this specific screen what first the first option is process initiator where you will specify the default initiator for this process ID which we have selected in stage 1. Okay, This should have the result because we need to use this result path to map to map the route for this particular path in the stage 6. So that is a must. Then we have notification rule. It's also a global setting that defines all the notification variable for this specific process ID which we have selected that we will be configuring it in the coming stages. Let's see in the system this is the process ID, process initiator and this is the notification rule. This is the default rule for this process ID. Next we will see how do we maintain this role. All as we seen all the possible value for the initiator rule should be defined in this result column. So based on based on the input, so based on the attributes in the request, the result will be populated. So this the result needs to be maintained here. Then let's say we have selected the rule ID grac underscore ar underscore initiator. This have the this have a result grac default result. So if you need if you have more than one result for this specific request then we need to maintain it here so that we can use this result to configure the path in the coming stages or to route this specific uh, request to a specific path we need this result which we will be configuring it in stage 6 let me show you in the system. Let's say GRC SG initiator. Our result is GRAC default result. This is a result. If you go to maintain mapping, here we say rule ID. This is the result and this is the path. So it is very important that we maintain these result in the stage 2 so that we can configure this in stage 6. Okay, let's see the next stage that is maintaining agent. In this stage we define approver agent or notification agent for the process ID which we have selected in stage 1. These are all the approver agent the agent rule ID also should be configured in stage 2. Then we can maintain all the agents, whether it is uh, approver agent or notification agent 
in this specific stage. So next one we wanted to see what is agent type. We have four different of different types of agents. Directly mapped user. That means the recipients can be directly mapped in MSMP. In MSMP you can directly map these users using using a group ID meaning you can create a group inside MSMP and assign this user to the group and you can use as a recipient for directly mapped users. If you see these are all the agent type directly mapped user PFCG role. PFCG role means that we you can create a dummy role without even even without having any content inside then you can assign this role to these specific users who should be agent in this specific stage. So just a role, normal PFCG role assigned to this user, specify the PFCG role in MSMP, then that they will become the assigned user will become the recipients. Third one is PFCG user group. In SU01 there is a tab called user group. That tab you can create a user group and assign a user group there. Then you can assign, you can specify the user group here. The users assigned in that specific user group, then they will become the recipients for this specific stage. And I would like to remind you this user group is not the logon data user group. That is that is used only for logon data. This is in the SU01, there is a separate tab called user group tab. The fourth one is GRC API rule. API means application program interface. This is the APIs which we have already seen based on uh, BRF or BRF plus flat rule or function module or above class based rules. Okay, using this API you can derive the result that is the recipient of this particular stage. In this configuration we have agent ID. This is what you define that means you create an agent ID for each specific agent then you will put some name it's a free text description then agent purpose you need to specify agent purpose that means you have two different type of agents if you see this is an approval and notification this agent is an approver user used for approving or you just a notification purpose only so that we need to define it here what is the purpose of this agent Let's say in a typical scenario that you you have the same agent needs to be notified as well as he is also an approver. In this case, you can use, for example, a suffix on underscore n for notification and uh, as normal for uh, for approvers because this agent ID should be an unique ID. So if we wanted to have an approver notification also, then we can create a one more agent ID with a suffix underscore n. This approvers are the approvers you will be using in stage 5 in our path and stage setting and the notification ag agent will be used in uh, stage 5 as well as stage 1. If we also seen this one in stage 1 that we have an agent which we will be using on the global stage 1 setting. We came to the end of part 1. We will be continuing part 2 for the same topic. Thank you very much.